This is the Horse Radio Network. This is episode 213 of Horse Tip Daily, a different horse tip, a different equine topic, a different equestrian expert every day. Horse Tip Daily brings the world of equine knowledge to you one day at a time. Today's tip is sponsored by Equestrian Collections. For the entire universe of equestrian shopping at your fingertips at a price you can afford, visit them at equestriancollections.com. Enjoy today's tip. Hi, going to geek back with you from Lexington, Kentucky, and you're listening to Horse Tip Daily. Well, today we have Dr. Jenny Johnson, our weekly visit from her, our veterinarian out of the Oak Hill Shockwave and Veterinary Chiropractic Clinic that's based in Calabasas, California. She's, as you know, she's a regular contributor to the new Jumping Radio Show, which is part of the Horse Radio Network, and this tip is taken, no, for, let me try that again. This tip is taken off of episode 13 and is co-hosted by Chris Stafford. You can hear the rest of the show by visiting to jumpingradio.com. Speaking seems to be an issue today, and I've done four shows already today, and uh, this is the fifth, so maybe that's why. And Dr. Johnson will be here in just a moment, but first, I need to speak to you about Equestrian Collections. You know, everybody has their favorite retail store. I know I've been in retail for a long time, and everybody seems to have their favorite and their go-to place. When I go to electronics, I go to Amazon. But we want you, if you haven't taken a look at Equestrian Collections yet, at least stop over to equestriancollections.com and take a look. They have a huge sale going on right now. They have their spring and summer sales going on, and they have uh, some great Ariat products on sale. They also have a tent sale going on right now for big savings over there for the best deals for you, your horse, and your pony. And not only can you get some terrific deals already at Equestrian Collections, if you use the coupon code 10DISCOUNT, all one word, 1010DISCOUNT, at checkout, you'll get $10 off your next order of $120 or more. And that'll add to the already tremendous prices that you're going to get at equestriancollections.com. So check out their savings. Check out what's going on over there with all of their new products. And it's time for the summer tent sale. So stop on by to equestriancollections.com and use the coupon code 10 discount at checkout for additional savings only for the listeners of the Horse Radio Network. And now, Dr. Johnson. Hi, Jenny. How are you this week? I'm excellent, Chris. How about you? Very good, thank you. Absolutely. Um, you know, I, I, I every week, you know, when you, we do these veterinary tips, I always look forward to them because you're on the subject of lameness, which uh, has always fascinated me. It's so complex, isn't it? That uh, dividing line between lameness and, and soundness, it, it's ve- it can be very finely tuned, can't it? Yes, it is. And, and uh, I think it is many times we need to look at degrees of soundness and uh, an important part of that and what we've been talking about is how does confirmation relate to that because obviously confirmation is is uh, how form relates to function and the structure of the horse plays a very important role in how the forces are distributed on the lower limbs and consequently what types of aches and, of aches and pains they might develop um, through their careers. Well, terrific. And then last week we talked about the four legs and I believe you have part two of that this week. I do. Last week we talked about uh, the conformation of the forelimb looking at the horse head-on, and today I'd like to talk a little bit about the conformation of the forelimb as viewed from the lateral aspect or from the side view, if you're standing to the side of the horse looking at the horse. And I will start again by some abnormalities or variations in the conformation of the the knee, Uh, first being the horse that's back at the knee, or another common terminology for that is the calf kneed horse. And in this case, the the knee of the horse is actually behind the vertical line that would extend down the uh, front aspect of the forelimb. Now, these horses tend to be predisposed to injuries of the knee, because they're hyperextending that knee. That knee is going backwards against the axis that it should be going, and so that does predispose them to injuries of that area. Now, the opposite of that would be the horse that's over at the knee, where the knee actually is in front of that vertical line that would be coming down the front of the leg. Um, And a couple of variations in this I think are important. If you see this type of conformation in the young untrained horse, it certainly can be a predictor of lameness and something to be concerned about. However, if you see it in the mature horse, it's a slightly different matter. This is 
somewhat commonly seen in uh, primarily in horses that jump. And some of these horses may actually appear to be on the verge of collapse or prone to stumbling, yet they actually show pretty good stability. So in the more mature, experienced horse that is jumping and has been doing his job well, I would be less concerned about the over-at-the-knee conformation uh, as a predictor of lameness. But in the young horse that has not been in training, I would be very concerned about it as a predictor of lameness. Um, and the third thing I'd like to talk about in the knee area is what's called tied in below the knee. And in this type of conformation, if you look just below the knee, the area uh, appears to be somewhat constricted. And these horses, particularly in young horses, tend to be prone to superficial flexor tendonitis uh, related to that conformation. Now, moving down the leg, I'd like to talk about uh, confirmation of the digit, and the digit meaning the pastern and the foot. Again, we're standing from the side of the horse, uh, standing at the side of the horse uh, viewing the confirmation. If you look at the axis of the pastern and the foot, in other words, you're drawing a line from the toe up along the front of the hoof and along the pastern towards the fetlock, that axis should be straight. It should not be buckled forward or buckled backwards. And the other thing we want to look at is that pastern angle. Typically, the ideal would be about 45 to 50 to 45 degrees. It should match the shoulder angle, as we talked about previously. And this angle is important in determining the load on the lower limb structures. If you have a more upright pastern, it's not absorbing as much shock, and you're also going to have a shorter stride. And these horses tend to be prone to foot lamenesses and also potentially uh, superficial flexor tendonitis. Uh, conversely, the horses with the long sloping pasterns may be at more of a risk for arthritis in the fetlock and the pastern joints. Now, those horses that have short upright pasterns but have a relatively normal hoof angle have a broken, what's called a broken foot axis. And those horses are at risk for developing foot lamenesses. Now, on the other hand, if you have a pastern angle that's lower than the foot angle, and this is called coon-footed, it causes undue stress on the soft tissues of the supporting structures of the fetlock. And in some cases, this conformation may actually result from severe damage to the suspensory ligament and loss of support of the fetlock joint. So that's, it could be sort of a little bit of chicken and the egg situation there. Sometimes they develop that conformation as a result of injury to the supporting structures. Sometimes they, they develop injuries to the supporting structures because of the type of conformation. Now, when you're looking, if you're dropping a plumb line, we'll go back to our plumb line example. If you're dropping a plumb line down the back of the tendons, that plumb line should hit the ground about five centimeters behind the heel in a well-conformed horse. Now, if you have long sloping pasterns, that line is going to end up further away from the foot, whereas if you have the short upright pasterns, uh, that plumb line is going to be closer to the back of the foot. And that just is another frame of reference to give our listeners um, a tool to help evaluate these conformations. And I, I can't stress enough, one of the best ways to become familiar with these uh, different conformations is to really look at horses very critically. Every time you see a horse, just stand there and get accustomed to making mental notes about how the horse is standing, what are the horse's conformational tendencies, and it really helps to train your eye uh, to make these notes every time you look at a horse. And I would encourage our readers to start developing uh, that sense as it will help them in, in, in countless ways, both in evaluating horses for soundness and lameness, but also understanding how the biomechanics function in the horse. And I think I'm going to leave off there for this week and then next week, we will look at the uh, hind limb conformation and how abnormalities or variations in hind limb conformation can contribute uh, to tendencies towards lameness in the hind limb. Terrific. Well, very insightful as ever, Jenny. Thank you so much. And I look forward to uh, traveling to the hind leg next week. <laughs> <laughs> well, thank you. Me too. All right. Thanks so much, Jenny. Well, thanks to Chris and Jenny for providing this tip. It was off of episode number 13 of the Jumping Radio Show. Well, we'll keep this short today as I'm just plain worn out. So I'll be back again tomorrow with another new expert and a different horse tip. Don't forget to check out all the other great shows on the network at horseradionetwork.com. Until then, stay safe, everyone. 